Today I want to walk through my garden and give you some specific examples of what I do to maximize the harvest in my limited space. It is June 28th, so I'm going to give you some examples of succession planting. And this is something that I do uh, to maximize my uh, harvest every year. And I'm going to um, just show you today summer plantings because there are different plantings that you can also do for spring. So you can get a lot of... Um, harvest. Um, you can save a lot of money by growing um, food in your garden, maximizing your harvest if you do a succession planting. If you overlook succession planting, you're not going to get as much out of your garden as you hope. So first I just want to go ahead and rule out a couple of plants. So if you're a new gardener, you will know not to plant these for succession harvest. That would be things like I'm not going to include everything, but I will give you examples like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, um, these type of plants that are going to grow and then produce lots of fruit and you'll continue to pick from them. That's not what you would use for succession planting. Succession planting is something that you are going to take your seeds and direct sow them into your soil and they will grow and then you can harvest from them for about two weeks and then you need to, um, the plant will stop producing for you. Now, it might continue to produce a little bit, but it's not going to be at the height of its production. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you, um, for instance, one of my favorite things to uh, do a succession planting with is my jade bush beans. And these are the first ones I think I sowed the seed to this year. So they are up, and they have some flowers on them, and they have little bi uh, tiny baby green beans. I can expect to be eating these probably in another week uh, to 10 days. Okay, um, so um, after I sowed the seeds to those, two weeks later, because this is a bush bean, do you remember that, I sowed some more. And you can tell these are a little bit smaller. All right, so those are coming up, and they've got little flowers on them, but no baby beans yet. Okay, and then here's some more that I sowed two weeks after that, and so those don't even have blooms on them yet. All right, so there's an example there, and then... Yesterday, I went ahead and sowed the seeds over here for more bush beans, and they're not up yet. So you can kind of see here, see there's my little popsicle stick, you can kind of see here that I will be able to expect to have bush beans continually through the summer, all right? Because when those start to produce their beans, they're going to produce them every two weeks, and they're going to produce a lot, and then the production is going to slow down. It will... Uh, when the production slows down, I like to pull them out and start something new. And my other beans will be producing for me then. So I'll always have them all through the summer. I'll include a link to that particular bean because it has a lot of resistance to different things. And it's a wonderful, wonderful bean. All right, it's starting to rain on me. I'm going to try to do this really quick. Um, carrots are another thing. Wonderful thing to grow. Last night, I went ahead and um, picked my carrots um, that I had. Those were the first ones that I planted. They were right down there. Two weeks later, I planted some more carrots over here. And I picked those last night so I'd have mature carrots and some baby carrots. I left just a few in there that definitely weren't even baby carrots yet. <laughs> so I left a few of those in there. And then two weeks after I planted those, I planted some more here. Okay, so um, and now I just planted some more last night. So every two weeks I do carrots. Um, another thing that's good to do are radishes. And um, so those are just my two favorite things to do a continuous harvest on. You'll really save a lot of money if you just remember to do that. The biggest problem I think I have with that is running out of room. <laughs> okay, and another, um, as far as herbs, what I like to grow uh, in a succession manner are, is definitely cilantro. Let me see if I have some down here that's coming up yet. Yes, my cilantro has um, germinated there. That's some cilantro. And let me give you another example here. The first cilantro to come up was early in the spring, and here it is now. It has little flowers on it. It's bolted. I'm waiting for it to produce the seed, and I will harvest it for coriander to use for cooking. Okay, two weeks later, I planted some more, and I put that in my container garden. I'll show you a picture of that. And it has just started to go to see seed. It's just started to bolt, and so I can't use it. I'm, I'm using it right now, but it is almost done. Okay, so cilantro is another one. Every two weeks, plant the seed for that. 
And then there's a couple of other things that I, I plant every um, like four weeks. So it might be two or three times during the summer. And that would be cucumbers. Okay, four weeks apart for my cucumbers. Um, because once those start to slow down, they also get a lot of, you know, could get diseases and stuff. It affects the production. I like to have a nice new plant producing for me. So cucumbers and then also squash. Two plantings of squash. Okay, I have another squash plant at my other location. Corn is another one you can succession plant. And that's mainly because corn comes in different, um, uh, let's say maturities. Okay, so some of them are early maturity, I think around nine weeks. Then you have mid-season, which is 11 weeks. You have late season, which is uh, 13 weeks. So you can plant your corn to how you think you want to have it all season long. You can plant out all three varieties at one time. Do know that those may cross-pollinate, um, but you can plant them out all at one time, and you'll have your early will come in, and then will come your mid-season, and then will come your late season. This particular corn here is um, an 80-day corn. I know this is a 90-day corn. It's a country gentleman. And then my son planted some over there, and I think his is a little bit earlier than mine. I think his is around an 82-day. I'm not real sure. I'll have to look that up. But it's peaches and cream is what he planted. Okay. So there you have it. Um, I hope that helps clear up some things about how to maximize the harvest in your garden. Because the easiest way to do that is to become very familiar with how you can succession plant something. Know that pole beans is not something you succession plant. I pointed out earlier. It's bush beans. Because your bush beans, your, because your pole beans are going to continue to produce for you all season. You can, just like your tomatoes, just like your peppers, okay? Because it is raining and I've got to get inside. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.